Good morning, interweb. Let's conlang. All languages make use of pitch or tone. Some, like English, employ tone in a marginal way to add extra information to an utterance. Other languages, like Mandarin, use tone to convey the core meaning of a word and to distinguish one word from another. We call these kind of languages tonal languages, and they are remarkably common. About 60 to 70% of the world's languages employ tone in this or a similar way. Thai, Yoruba, Navajo, hell, even the likes of Swedish dabbles a bit. So tone, or rather lexical tone, is a thing definitely worth considering in your conlangs. In this video, we'll look at tonal genesis, the process by which tones arise. In the next video, we'll look at how languages deal with their tones once they got them. So tones come in three flavors, level tones, simple contours, and complex contours. Level tones are pronounced with an even pitch throughout the utterance. They are the most common type of tone and can be either high, ma, mid, ma, or low, ma. Simple contour tones change pitch in a single direction throughout the utterance. They are less common than level tones and can be either rising, ma, or falling, ma. Usually, the number of rising tones in a given tonal language is less than or equal to the number of falls. In other words, languages prefer falls over rises. Complex contour tones change direction throughout the utterance. They are the rarest of the bunch and can be either convex, a rise then a fall, ma, or concave, a fall then a rise, ma. Cross linguistically, concave contours are preferred over convex contours. And finally, it's worth mentioning that often tonal languages have syllables or words that are atonal, unmarked for tone. These usually, though not always, surface as low level tones by default, or they gain their tones from their surroundings. Also, just so we're clear, tones are not musical notes. No natural language specifies exact pitches, just relative pitches. So tones can arise from a bunch of places, but the most common pathway is through loss of consonants and or loss of voicing distinctions in consonants. In general, the devoicing of onset consonants creates level tones or tone registers, more on this later, and the loss of coda consonants creates contours. In onset position, voiced obstruents tend to produce low tones, voiceless obstruents tend to produce high tones, Voiced sonorants can go either way, it's up to you, and voiceless sonorants probably produce high tones, though I've yet to find anything definitive on this in the literature. In coda position, any consonants that go through the glottal stop before being lost can create a rising contour. Any consonants that can go through the voiceless glottal fricative, huh, before being lost can produce a falling contour. That, in a nutshell, is the basic idea, though in reality, it's a little more complicated. See, consonants that are produced with a lax larynx may induce breathy voice in a neighboring vowel, which may lower the pitch of that vowel. Conversely, consonants that are produced with a tense larynx may induce creaky voice in the neighboring vowel, which in turn may raise the pitch of the vowel. In general, laxness is associated with voiced consonants, and tenseness is associated with voiceless consonants. But that's not always the case, as we'll soon see. Right, so let's get evolving, shall we? Let's start off super, super, super simple. Here's some proto words. Voiced obstruents in onset position create low level tones. Voiceless obstruents create high level tones. As it stands, tone is currently allophonic, because the words are still differentiated by consonant voicing. So let's devoice to make the tone phonemic. Check that out. Now the only difference between pa and pa is tone. So boom, tone evolved. It can be that simple. Now imagine a word like ha comes along and gets suffixed on. That intervocalic H is liable to get deleted, so we'll end up with a situation where two vowels come together, creating a long vowel, and the tone levels merge, creating contours. And if we look really closely, we'll see that level tones may appear on any syllable type, light or heavy, but contours necessarily only appear on heavy syllables. 
Cross-linguistically, it is very common for languages to limit their most complex contours to heavy syllables and allow all other tone types to go wherever. And with that, Lang1 done. So let's ramp up the complexity a bit here. This time, let's say our protolang is CVC. Voiced obstruent onsets, low. Voiceless obstruent onsets, high. Devoice, level tones locked in. Cool, now let's call those codas to create some contours, or more precisely to define the endpoint of our contours. The level tones from our onsets have defined the starting points. Stops go out through the glottal stop, creating a rise. Fricatives go out through the voiceless glottal fricative, creating a fall. Low rising to high, rising tone. High rising to high, well, that's just high. Low falling to low, well, that's just low. And high falling to low is a falling tone. Gravy. Now let's mash some words together. Deleting the intervocalic consonants gets us heavy syllables with level tones, simple contours, and complex contours. And just like in Lang 1, we find that our most complex contour is limited to heavy syllables, with our simple contours and level tones able to go on any syllable type. Oh, and if you ever find that you've created a contour you don't like or want, you can just make up a rule to forbid it. In general, high pitch tends to be more prominent than low pitch, so we could, for example, prevent a convex contour by saying the high portion overrides the low. And there you go, Lang 2, done. So let's now really start to flex our tonal genesis muscles here. We'll go with the same proto-lang as before, only this time, let's switch up the order we do things in. First, let's call the codas to create our contours. Stops rising, fricatives falling. Then, let's devoice our onsets. Because we already have contours, devoicing our onsets will create tone registers. Voiced lowers the whole contour into the lower register. Voiceless raises the whole contour into the higher register. So what we've done is created a tone split, doubling the number of tones which we could label as low mid, mid high, mid low, and high mid, if we wanted to. And of course, just like before, we can smash together words and delete some sounds to produce even more tones, if we wanted to. Though I'd recommend not going too mad here, a naturalistic range would be to have between two and nine tones. Anyways, Lang 3, complete. Okay, so for our final demo lang, let's really go all in. Here's my proto lang. So what we got here is a three-way voicing distinction in our stops. Voiced, voiceless, and aspirated. And no voicing distinction in our nasals. Whenever we have more than two voicing distinctions, we have options. We could go with tonal genesis based on primary voicing. Voiced, low, voiceless, high. Which is what we've been doing so far. Or we could base our tonal genesis on secondary voicing. In this case, aspirated versus unaspirated. But depending on your protolang, you could be looking at glottalized versus non-glottalized, or maybe pulmonic versus non-pulmonic, for example. If we do go with secondary voicing, we need to decide which category is most tense or lax, and contrast that category with the others. Voiceless aspirates are definitely more tense than unaspirated sounds. So I'll say that voiceless aspirates de-aspirate to create high-level tones, and everything else, in comparison, receives a low tone. As for the nasals, we don't have a voicing distinction associated with them, so let's simply say that they just don't take part in tonal genesis. That means our man syllable will be atonal, and, as previously mentioned, it will either receive a default level tone, or it'll get its tone from its surroundings, which we'll cover in the next video. Another way of getting syllables unmarked for tone is by taking little frequently used function words and grinding them down to almost nothing, thus wiping out their tone distinction. It's kind of like how in English and is used so often that we just grind it down into a nondescript n sound in rapid speech. Same shtick with tone, just the tone also grinds away to nothing. Anyways, getting back to it, let's call all non-nasal codas just like before. Stops, rising, fricatives, falling nasals, unchanged. So now we've a bunch of tones, and because our tones came from an aspiration contrast, we still have voicing contrasts. Which means we could, if we wanted to, do another round of tonal genesis, this time based on primary voicing. Let's do that, and let's also do the tone split thing from earlier, because you know, we're going all out. Voiced, 
Low register, voiceless. High register. And again, nasals don't take part in tonal genesis. So we end up with low mid, mid high, high, low, a low level tone in the high register, well that's just a mid level tone, high mid, and some toneless syllables. Pretty cool. We do have more rises than falls, which, you know, is fine, but languages prefer falls over rises. So how about we say that this high register rise never sticks? We could say that the speakers stick with the more prominent high component, giving us a merger of high level tones, or we could say that the speakers split the difference and turn the contour into a mid-level tone, which we could say merges with our established mid-tone, or remains distinct, giving us four level tones, high, high mid, low mid, and low, one rise and one fall. And once again, we could glom stuff together, delete and merge tones to create even more distinctions. Our fourth and final demo line, done. So in summation, pick which tones you want your language to have. Set up a voicing distinction to give you your high and low tones. Derive your level tones or tone registers from your onsets and your contours from your coda. And if you want, merge syllables to create even more complex tones. Then go ahead and watch part two of this video where we figure out what to do with our tones once we got them. Good morning Interweb, thank you so much for watching this video, our first little foray into the world of tones. Also, a massive thanks goes out to all the folks over on Patreon who helped make Artifaxian a possibility. In particular, Lycan, Johan Spadka, Oliver Reed, Spencer Brownlee, Alexander Roper, Andrew Pisha Hale, John Huyer, Rip De Passe, and World Anvil. Your support means the world to me, thank you so much. Until next time, Edgar out.